In this video, we're going to look at charcoal and ways of using it as a mark making tool. Charcoal is a natural material made by burning plants, wood or bone over a long period of time in a kiln with a restricted airflow. It's a dry medium that can be used in its raw form as sticks or powder, or can be mixed with gum or a wax binder to make it easier to handle, like in products such as compressed charcoal. It's a versatile medium that can be manipulated to suit your drawing. For this example I'm going to just experiment making simple marks on the page. Starting with smaller lighter lines as well as bolder thicker marks. It's a very soft and brittle substance that means it can be shaped by the user for very fine detailed drawings or larger shaded areas that can be worked over. Using the side of the stick, areas of shading can be worked over to intensify the blacks. Pressure is another important factor with charcoal, and you can easily achieve a wide tonal range from the same piece. It can be used in the same way as pencils for hatching and cross hatching and can make interesting gestural marks to portray texture or pattern. I think one of its most interesting characteristics is due to its organic nature producing slightly irregular and unexpected results. These can be overlaid and merged to produce dense intricate shadows. When drawing you will become very aware of the chalky dust that is created on the paper. I think this really adds to the quality of mark making and it can easily be fused into the paper surface using your fingers or a cloth. Instead of just using the side of the charcoal stick, experiment using different mark making shapes to build up your dense layers of tone. Charcoal is a very hands on direct drawing medium and I think one of its key characteristics is the ability to blend and smudge and continue manipulating the surface of the drawing. You can work back into these dense areas, blending the layers as you go, or you can leave layers and marks floating on top. Due to its powdered nature, you can also use a brush to softly integrate shadows and tones into your work. It has a slight blurring effect which can add a subtle detail or more texture. I could see this technique being useful if you were trying to describe hair or fur or even movement within your drawing. Or it could just be another way of building up tone using mark making techniques.
It can also be effective for delicately blending smooth gradients, using the excess powder to create the form of the shape. You can crush your own charcoal to make the powder using sandpaper or a pestle and mortar, but you can also buy it from an art shop for a more even consistency. Here I'm just using the powder with a brush to show how you can make subtle, considered tones as well as bold, expressive marks for looser, abstract artworks. As well as thinking about the charcoal itself, it's worth looking at the paper or ground you're working on, as this will alter the way the charcoal reacts. I'm doing a quick experiment with three types of paper. The first is a very smooth, slightly shiny printer paper. See how the charcoal is unable to penetrate the surface and produces a very flat, muted grey tone. The next is on a textured Somerset paper and instantly you can see how much darker it is with the charcoal getting caught in the fibres of the paper. The last test is on a textured canvas paper. Again, it is darker with increased contrast as the charcoal fills the grooves of the canvas. It also has a more regimented, grid-like appearance that would really affect the finished artwork. As well as thinking about the charcoal and the paper you're using, I started to think about ways of creating textures and patterns looking beyond the paper. Here I have used the three-dimensional surface of some DIY offcuts to create an interesting relief print. Taking this one step further, I am now using this technique by layering multiple imprints from the same piece of wallpaper to create a unique and unexpected texture.